Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to a video. It's been a little while, but as they say, it's been a long time since I've rock and rolled. It's been a long time, been a long time, been a long time. A lonely, 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 lonely time. No, I'm back. <laughs> I have a live show tomorrow and I think we're doing Super Fun Sunday. So I need to, I need to get my um, YouTube cardio up. So um, I, I was trying to figure out what to do and um, this is a book that I've had for a long time, and I can't remember. I'm assuming that I got it from DC as a comp, but I, I love this book. It's it's um, George Perez art with Marv Wolfman writing it, but it's not really a comic. It's more of a, um, almost like an encyclopedia with like spot illustrations. Real nice Alex Ross wraparound cover. We'll, we'll admire that at the end. Um, we'll just look at the front cover for now. But um, I love all the drawings in it. So um, we don't really need to go through it in order, per se. I mean, we'll look at the first few pages in order, and then we can hop around a little bit. But, um, yeah, this thing is badass. So settle in, and let's go for a ride. All right. Just don't look at that one. That's for later. Oh, this is cool. Alex Ross is so damn good. Oh man, I love this. I'm gonna see this in black and white. <laughs> I'm always like, oh man, that is really good. His values are great. And that's kind of why I wanted to see it. Here we're going to full screen mode. Bigger is better. See, I'm already uh I've I've done so many YouTube videos and stuff in the past that I remember that the bigger the better. Some people watch these on their TV. I've done that in the past and um it's pretty fun. They're like gigantic then. Um but yeah, this is this is so cool, and um, you know, obviously he's painting. But the real popular trend. I actually did a quite a long video on this for Patreon a couple of days ago. Uh, wash, like wash, is kind of like all over comics now. Um, it has been for a while, but uh, it, you know, to do this with like like line work would be so challenging because to get these different values of gray you would be hatching a lot and it could end up looking way, way overworked. So it's a, it's a delicate balance, but um, obviously with any kind of um, painter material, um, you can control the values better, but even color has value. I mean, people that paint know what I'm talking about, but all right, let me get out of full screen mode for a second. Like I said, I kind of want to go in order just for a sec, for a second on this. So I like even this, I think this is really, really fun sounds silly because it wasn't drawn this way but i could see someone like an arthur adams going like oh man that's cool i'm just gonna draw a version of it where i actually do like the lettering it gets a little i mean it at this size it's actually very hard for me to read this bottom um thing like it almost looks like a different word to me but and it's funny speaking of art adams this almost has like a tiny bit of an art adams vibe and in particular this this part right here um but uh yeah, I mean, I'm the kind of, I'm sort of the same as Art Adams, where, like, for me, I like drawing, like, everything. So if I would do a piece like this, I would want to draw the DC logo. I would want to draw this. I would I would want it all on one board. I get, like, kind of particular about that type of stuff. But you don't have to be. You, I mean, it could you could obviously just take images and drop them into uh, open letters. So... What began as a single universe grew to become a multiverse. I won't read it all, but you can. <laughs> that's where I tap out, right there. One sentence in. That's all my um, OCD can handle. All right. Ah, oh, this is so fun. As you all, all know, I'm... I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a video game nerd, but I'm heavily, heavily influenced by not only video games, but the concept art books and stuff like that. And stuff like this, the origin, like, I mean, they're starting it at, like, square one with, like, the Big Bang or whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, I just think it's so fun world building and things like that. So, she's got a piece of technology. Boop, 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 boop. That's how you know it's working. <laughs> Like I said, we want to go chronological for just a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. All right. Wait, one more full screen. But yeah, this stuff is so fun. I, you know, and, and Dungeons and Dragons kind of has this sort of vibe too with uh, like their um, 
deities and demigods books or the monster manuals and all that kind of stuff like you get i mean dungeon master's guide and player's handbook as well They've, it's like great art with like some sort of like text that sort of works you through um you know either they're you know they're breaking down information in like a factual way and the illustrations kind of help um sort of capture that moment but either way i love spot illustrations and, you know, I mean, and this this actually does have a little bit of a chronological vibe. So it, although it's not standard sequential art, um, you know, it, I've always felt that this this book kind of moves you through it in that way. Like, this is really, really cool. I'm just trying to get I've actually drawn these guys one time. I did a double page spread. Oh, this is cool. So this has got these guys. I did a Green Lantern double page spread probably like... Oh God, a long time ago, 12 or 15 years ago, just in pencils, um, was like attempting to kind of like see if I could draw comic book characters, uh, you know, to try to get work. But I mean, it, I never showed, I don't think I ever showed the piece to any editors, but I, I still have it somewhere, I think. It wasn't to my standards, so I don't think I showed it around. I mean, for a beginning penciler, it's not bad by any means, but probably not at pro level, I don't think. I shut it down before it ever got a chance to fly. <laughs> All right, let's go. Come on, we got to go. We got so much to look at. But yeah, after Comic-Con, I was, um, I caught a really, I don't know, like I won't call it bad cold, but I had like a little bit of like a cold for a few days and then I threw out my back um I think like that Wednesday after the show I was walking through the house and I tripped on something and like to sort of like not eat shit I kind of like tried to you know like physically move in a way like a cat no <laughs> like a ninja I did a roll and I when I jumped up to land on my feet after doing a backflip I uh, <laughs> I jacked up my back so I was in a lot of pain for geez six days it, it sucked i worked the whole time too i drew every single day in so much pain but i could i could get myself up for that but it was like to do youtube and stuff like that i couldn't really like mentally focus because it hurt and i was congested on top of it which isn't a good vibe i really like this this is very very cool the the fabric and stuff is fun I like, <laughs> there's little, there's little flurries of fabric, like, sticking out. Like, everything is going straight down here, which, you know, whatever is, is fine. And then just this one piece is somehow, like, catching wind or cosmic, sort of, a cosmic gust. And it sort of flutters it up. I like the chains, too. The hands, the hands are actually quite nice. I like the trick, you know, tricky it's good, 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 good. Actually, was studying um, the bones of the hand and um, some hand drawing stuff this morning, right before I did this. But I wanted to get a video up early, so I took, I kind of cut my practice short, and I'm gonna do this and then get back to that for like another two hours. Not just hands. I'm working on anything that I don't think that I draw well. I told that to Libra Mejo. It was his birthday on the 31st, and I shot him a note to say happy birthday. And uh, we wrote back and forth a couple of times, but I was telling him that, like, every morning I try to practice for two hours before I actually start working, and I'm trying to fine-tune things that I, I think that I'm sucky at. So hopefully it works out. <laughs> Can't hurt. I mean, I definitely, like, I, yesterday I was working on, um, oh, what was it? Uh, was it from a book? Oh, Will Will Weston. I was kind of going through his Instagram, and I was I was working on trouble spots of anatomy for me, like things that I think that I I should understand better. So I was kind of looking at that and doing some studies. All right, focus on the task at hand, Rich. This is the DC universe, not freaking Will Weston drawing. Oh, one thing I will throw in though, and then I'll go, I'll focus on this. Um, this is kind of McFarlane esque, actually, um, meaning that Todd Todd looks like he would have been inspired by pieces like this. Um, 
which which I definitely in his earlier work, I don't know if it was on Coyote, but one of those really early books that he did, you could definitely see what what I I believe would be maybe a George Perez influence. Not that wasn't the only influence, um, but uh, I think he definitely dipped his toe a little bit in that. Um, I'm doing an inking course for Comic Artist Boot Camp. I it won't be just specifically me, but. Um, you know they're they're doing these um, pretty elaborate like courses now, uh, and I'm gonna be doing a, a, I don't know I in my guess probably half of the inking course. So if you're into that kind of thing, you may you may dig it. And they're doing um, an in person thing up in LA, and I think September that I'll probably go to, which will be weird because I don't ever leave the house. <laughs> High pressure. <laughs> Okay, so let's focus on this. This almost looks like, um, she? Ah, it's really interesting. You start to realize, like, how influential, like, I, I don't know, for, for me, like, I see, like, Arthur Adams in this. I see some Dan Frega. Um, I mean, Jim Valentino, I mean, there's a lot of artists that you can definitely see that were probably inspired by Perez. And I, I don't know when all of this art was drawn, if this is a collection of stuff that he did way back, or if it was stuff that was done specifically for this book. I want to say that this book came out in probably, man, I had it for a long time, early 2000s. So a digital version came out, in, I think 2023, but I, I've had it for a long, long time. And this stuff is so cool. This reminds me so much of like Dungeons and Dragons art. I mean, this could be right out of the Deities and Demigods. Or vice versa, however you look at it. But man, that's cool. As detailed as it is, he actually kind of really minimalistically um, put stuff in the room. Everything is quite ornate, but there's not a lot of objects. I mean, there is and there isn't. What I mean is it's not cluttered. Like, he doesn't, like, you know, he's got, like, one vase on this, like, thing. There's, like, one sort of burning thing on this one. There's a figure here with a little bit of a, like, design element to the actual casket itself. But um, he, he, he doesn't get it cluttered, but the level of detail is quite enormous. This is nice. Ah, oh, this is really cool. This is cool, too. Fun. All right. Well, hopefully everyone's doing well. People probably thought that I, I had something nefarious happen to me. Where's Rich? What happened to Rich? Where did he go? I was just here. <laughs> right. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to order, I think, today that, um, this made me think of it, uh, it's, oh shoot, what's the company called? They do that retro, um, they have the retro, like, digital brushes that when you color, get, like, the, um, old school, like, DC or Marvel, like, paper look, and they've got, um, uh, color swatches so that you can get colors there's some man this is a great piece right here god this is amazing um hold on let me see if i have it on my phone i think i took a screenshot of it just to remind myself of what it was Screenshots. give me one sec i just want to say the name so that for people oh this right here it's the craft tone comic color brushes I'm going to probably get it for Photoshop. I mean, I don't really draw digitally. I mean, I don't. Um, but um, for there, I, I look at it more as a coloring tool. I mean, they do, I think, have inking brushes, but um, also the coloring brushes. But they can get this look, and it comes with, like, textured paper that'll make it look like it's on newsprint. It's really, really neat. Um, I, I, and I think it's, like, 30 bucks. So I want to support their efforts because I think it's cool. And two, it really looks fun to play with. Like, I would love to do a piece with it and have that kind of 1970s, 60s, 50s sort of comic book look on um, some pieces. I would draw them traditionally. I would just finish them, uh, you know, the colors and stuff with those tools. 
always make original art. Okay, so let's just start going out of order so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So anyway, this is the wraparound cover by Ross. Ross always does great work. I mean, um, you know, it's just a cool piece. I really like this. His Shazam is interesting. Like, I don't know how... I don't know how I would draw Shazam, to be honest. His looks like a very, very tough guy. Like, he... And very... Like, he looks like he could have been a boxer in, like, the 30s. Which is kind of cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's some pencils back here and inks and stuff. Like, look at this. This is so badass. I actually, you know, I had an idea to do a couple of pieces like this. I don't want to... I'm not going to say too much because I want to spoil it. But, um... Yeah, seeing the Alex Ross, Alex did um, a piece where he did all the characters individually and then I think kind of montaged it together. But um, I've never really drawn anything like this with this many characters all sort of doing it. I, th I thought it would be kind of fun to come up with some sort of an idea to do something like it. So it looks like this is a whole bunch of different artists, but you know, it's quite seamlessly done unless it's just signed by all these different people. I, I'm not real good at picking out all these styles, but this, to me, kind of looks like it was drawn by one artist. But maybe I'm way off. I mean, obviously the name signed down here would make you believe otherwise. I'll tell you what, if this is actually drawn and signed by all these dudes, this piece is worth a fortune. Kind of makes sense that it would be. But probably in the next page I might even explain it. Let's see what it is. Yeah, maybe it was drawn. Yeah, so it was. It was drawn by a veritable who's who of best stars from the Golden Age. It's crazy how... I mean, because I've seen jam pieces of, like, Comic-Cons. And, and um, you know, the characters are all different sizes. And it doesn't kind of feel like one piece. This actually... Well, you can see, really, the like, like, Hubert in this now more. Um, but, uh, yeah, they did a really good job with, like, the size relationships. And even style blending it's not bad it's a shame that some of these faded so much I'm telling you you got to watch what tools you use because that's just a bummer i wonder how long it took for it to get to that point you know what i mean from the day it was drawn until it's funny you can tell who did it i think this is uh, i don't want to guess um but yeah, you can tell by... Oh, so Steve Rude used the, the naughty pen. <laughs> so, oh, this guy's signature is almost completely gone. Gray Morrow is what that says. And there's maybe another name underneath it. But yeah. No clue what those tools were, though, to be honest. I, I can't even recommend what to avoid but all, although that said that it was drawn a long time ago so odds are um you might not even be able to get those tools today anyway i think most of the multi-liners like copic and the pigma microns and stuff like that so far so good they're they seem to be holding up well this is cool i really like this and i, I actually like the simplicity of it i've said this in past videos more probably more particular for patreon uh, for me, if I drew a background like this, I would be very, very tempted to put black all over this background stuff and probably have like a big cast shadow that sort of like wraps around some of these forms to sort of frame everything. But he really didn't need it. And it's something to remind myself of is like, you don't need to put black everywhere. Oh, well, it's funny. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it like this. It would have been a little different, but I would have, uh, I mean, I can show real quick. I probably would have had some shadows brush. I probably would have had some shadows like like draping across this. I would have had this black. I would have maybe had like this black. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I mean, maybe even some, some black in the foreground too, but you could frame this stuff really good and kind of direct the eye where it's like like around things. That's what I, how I tend to use black is to like force you to look certain places, but I'm no Perez, so, you know. This is nice. Aquaman. He did a good job on his knee. Because from this angle, his knee would be turning this way. That's, that's good. This is nice, too. I, this is actually... I like this um, the lower part of his body a lot. 
This is nice too. Damn, that was a solid drawing. No nonsense. That's when you know you're a badass, when you can boil something down to just the pure essence of something like that, and it still looks pretty dynamic. And man, there's just every line kind of means something. It's funny, it was one of the that was one of the things that I was gonna talk about in that inking course was that I think younger artists were drawn to uh detail, you know. Drawing's better if it has more. And then as artists get better, they start to minimalize at times. And, and it's not out of laziness, it's out of selectivity. It's an interesting thing. This is cool. Nice too. <laughs> the baby is funny. It's a nice expression on the baby's face, and she looks quite happy too. Oh, the baby's hand. Whoa, what is the baby got all over himself? Was he in the dirt? He came from dirt? What is this? I clearly don't know my origins very good because it's like. I don't know. We'll call it the plains. I don't know if it's the desert. And then a child arises from the dirt. Is that how Wonder Woman was born? What is that? <laughs> I like this guy. Wake up! I guess this is kids playing soldiers and cowboys and then he grew up to be a soldier or a ninja this is nice like this cool cool perspective i like how low we are on the scene and like we have to kind of like traverse this area you know you figure there's probably dudes with like rifles up in some of these buildings about to like knock your ass out if you uh make the wrong move this tank went up a very steep hill or i guess maybe that's snow and that's the 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 wake of snow being disrupted by the tank There's not much detail in the back of the tank and this is cool and there's the lady with the walkie-talkie this is interesting. It looks like it's not finished yet. I wonder what year he did this. Well, it says 1185. So it's possible that this could have been 1985. It could just be a different numbering system for something else, though. Look at the Nazis. All right. interesting if there's a hand right here hmm seems big I don't know maybe it's like Thanos's hand or something not Thanos but I don't know some some someone big huh it yeah, because the scale of the trees and the palm fronds. I mean, that arm is as big as a palm frond, which palm fronds are like four to six feet big. I don't know. This is cool. I like that. It's fun. Pretty cool design. Sort of looks like it could like unroll. Coil back. This is a nice design too. Kind of Art Nouveau-ish. Man on a horse. A squatting Indian. Civil War. Jonah Hex. I love Jonah Hex. And then look at this guy. El Papagayo. <laughs> Hello, friend. He's got big earrings. I don't... That doesn't seem very functional for a bad guy. If he gets in a tussle... Those are going to get ripped out of his head. 
you're going to be a bad guy, you need to be streamlined. You don't need hangy, dangly things. Uh, but, you know, maybe he's got it covered. This is cool. And Galleon. It's very nice. He didn't even use Google SketchUp. <laughs> this is cool. Nice upshot. Bosoms. Oh, Dracula. He's like, come to me. And he's got very tight pants. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Settle down, Rich. This is pencils? What is this? I think it's pencils. Wow, you know, this is pretty amazing. Like, he doesn't, like, I mean, he's got the blue underdrawing. He doesn't really look like he has to rework much of his lines. There's the, a lot of confidence going into this. Not a lot of hunting and pecking. Now, it's possible that he may lightbox some stuff. I don't know. Oh, this is that uh, page. But yeah, I mean, he really looks like he's able to commit to his lines real quick. I don't I don't really see any other, um, you know, like guidelines. Like if I draw a head, I was like, I draw like, you know, the sort of like stuff initially. I put down too much information to be honest. It, it, it really kind of annoys me. This is nice. Cool hand. This is a great hand too. I like that he uh, mixed it up too, that it's not just like two of this hand flipped or something or vice versa. And like even this is not like all symmetrical. It makes it more interesting. Wow, this is great. I could definitely see Arthur Adams being down with this. Not really sure what year Arthur Adams broke in. 82, 81? It might have been a little bit after that. But I think Mignola and Arthur Adams kind of broke in around the same time. Early 80s. 80s. Living in the 80s. This is that one piece. I never noticed this before. Let's check it out closer, friends. He's got the breasts spilling over because of the way that she's laying and there's no support on them. You have to draw stuff like that. You could think of it like a sandwich bag full of like water and how it would slough around. This is cool. I really like actually how he drew this tree. It's it's very, very different than how I would have approach tree bark, but I've definitely seen trees that are lumpy bumpy like that. That's pretty cool. Or is this rock? Oh, maybe it's rock. It's like a tree rock. Uh, nah, it's probably a tree. I think oak trees have that kind of trunk. This is nice too. Yeah, these are all really, really fun drawings. It's like, to me, this is like a, a buffet of ideas different angles that you could shoot scenes at different levels of detail just different ideas to me it's very um inspiring just looks fun looks creative you know we saw this too it's funny we they really actually had a lot of the art um in this format and and i really do i really like that these companies now are starting to show this process i saw someone recently that was very very excited it was a fan not a artist um they were so stoked that there was um they could see white out on some of this type of material you know it was really interesting for them to see like where the artist made corrections and stuff so you know i think that there's there's at least some appeal to everyone to sort of appreciate the artistry that goes into um this work because like for me like i'm looking at this background here with the sort of splatter effect now it looks like it's in, some of it's in black so it's either a toothbrush could be airbrush but it, i mean hard to say but it, it definitely looks like it's on the black and white but you know if you saw this in black and white you might go oh okay that's not even there maybe it is you know hard to say I haven't seen a lot of that technique on this stuff, so. Oh, there's some here, though. Could be toothbrush splatter, just masked off. But, I mean, it could just as easily have been airbrushed, too. This is nice. I like these ships. Um, They're they're simple, but cool looking. <sighs> Sorry, I apologize. I'm still coming out of all this. 
last couple of weeks. Dark side, that's what I was thinking of. Oh, this is really cool. Man, this looks fun. Man, that is so cool. Look at this guy. That was I remember when um the guys at Wildstorm were working on the DC multi universe game and they had to go through like all the encyclopedias, like the DC encyclopedias with all the characters. There's the there's huge books that they have with everyone. And DC has some really, really funny, very kind of corny uh, superheroes that are hysterical. Like, I mean, I don't know, Space Cabby might be cool, but stuff like that, you know, like almost where it's like, you know, Wheat Toast Man or something. And you're like, wow, it's so funny that they did that. There's there's this weird part of me, though, that I, I always um, think that, like, if you if you respect the character's origin, no matter how goofy it is, um, and you put the same amount of effort as you would into, like, a Batman drawing as you would for, like, Wheat Toast Man or Space Cabby. Um, all those characters can actually be pretty cool. And, and you almost, you get, like, you get kind of extra credit for taking a character that's kind of maybe known to be sort of, like, lame. And uh, making it, like, cooler or different than it's ever been seen. I mean, this is a weird example, but, like... You know, from what they say historically, the Daredevil was kind of in the dumps before like Frank Miller took it over. But Frank, but Daredevil had been drawn cool before Frank Miller for sure. Uh, but you know what I mean? It was like he kind of took like sort of a struggling character and gave it some sort of cool factor. But it 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 could be because he respected the origin of the character, you know, the actual story behind it. Because that that's what I think is important. Is I, I mean you almost become like a method actor when you draw these characters and it's like, you know, I think this is boomerang. I think he's in suicide squad. Yeah. It's funny. I, uh, he looks like he's like, um, an airline stewardess, <laughs> but also like that. He, um, uh, maybe flies a plane. <laughs> like the tiger guy. But, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, if you just get into the character's skin and, sh and try to respect, like, their uh, psychological profile, you can do some cool shit. This is interesting. It almost looks like a train. But then this is kind of Wonder Woman logo upside down. But this looks reminds me of, like, Fantastic Four. It's very weird. I mean, obviously, this is DC. I'm just saying that, like, like there's definitely a Kirby influence on this. But this is nice. Could definitely uh, again kind of the Todd McFarlane thing Todd Todd um I saw an interview not too long ago it might have been an older interview or might I don't know it might have been one of them there's a couple of new ones that went up um but he lists I think like four artists as kind of his main influences and there was one that I I wouldn't think of or he might have been breaking down like where he said like kind of got like this from this guy this from this person this from this person and I, I don't know like capes from someone I'm obsessed with capes right now. This guy's got a very big head for the size of his body. But maybe he's big-headed. I don't know. <laughs> it makes him feel very short. But I, obviously that's kind of the intention. Because he's not as big as these other characters. Alright. Look at him. He's sad because he doesn't have a nose. <laughs> What are the spiders hanging off of? They're just hanging down? It's like the whole world has been covered in spider webs. Why are they all... They're almost all the same exact pose. That's weird. It's weirding me out. I guess if they were different poses, though, I will say that it would it would become distracting to the eye a little bit because then you, you would focus on each one as their own pose and it's more of a graphic design where having the the silhouette be repetitive uh your brain takes it in and it doesn't focus on it and try to like um cat categor categorize it it can look at this as just one thing really fast and so you don't you don't obsess on this because like each one is different 
So there's something to be said for being aware of stuff like that. I just learned it by instinct. Um, but uh, things like that. I, I, I started picking up on patterns in art when I was like 16. A friend of mine got got me excited about art again. He was a pretty good artist. and um, So we started getting into... Um, H.R. Giger real heavily and some other stuff too, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think album cover art too, because the real good album cover designers from like the 70s, they had very, very strong compositional skills, and you start to see um, how they, how they uh, direct the eye. And great comic book artists will do the same thing. This is nice, I like this hand. Actually, all the hands are quite nice. Ooh, look at this. This is cool. Wow. Damn, this is crazy. This is so wild, but I, I really like it. Damn. Hell yeah. This is so cool. <laughs> His city is great. It's, it's like... Ah, it's so clear. And there's no black on it. Rich, remember, you don't have to put black on everything. We're just putting shadows everywhere. The world isn't that dark. <laughs> Man, that, that is so cool. Look at these characters on the balcony here. Careful, guys, you're going to fall. This guy's too big right here, unless he's very, very tall, but his size is way off. Um... This is more accurate. I mean, I know he's closer to us, but I don't know. He, he, this guy looks like he's like 14 feet tall. Maybe he is. I don't know. All right. Oh, that's cool. Man, that is such a cool drawing. This guy. Power Girl. Before she had huge breasts. This is just moderately abundant I like how he drew the, the arms and the anatomy on this uh, this is kind of fun how this connects like he it, he made it like one shape this is a little more like you can see the different approaches on this side but this looks great too this is all solid Man, this is actually really good I like the, sh the little bit of shadow under there really really it pushes the chest forward. It creates a nice pushback on this. This looks like it's protruding. So he really worked it. And then this is very, very nice because these really do feel like they're coming forward. And it's not like, um, like it doesn't look like a side view or like a flat view where everything is like flat and like his arms just go perfectly out and then up. This actually feels like it's coming forward. You know what I mean? Like, if these were cylinders, it's coming forward. This is coming forward. So, really, really nicely done. All right. Enough blah, blah. Ooh, this is cool, too. I would be down to draw something like this. And I would be just crazy enough to draw all the stars, all these stupid logos. It would be a pain in the ass. But at the end, it would all be on one piece of art. <laughs> This is like, when you finish it, this is how you stand. You're like, I drew every star and stripe. Man, this is a great figure. Uh, so cool. These are really, really good. This is nice, too, for just a standing pose. Look at this guy. Who are you? And he, look at him. Okay. Bushmaster. Nice. <laughs> they had, he, he got canceled, though later <laughs> they're like uh, we need to change your name he's like why is that it's like dude Batman my nemesis <laughs> I love Batman but he's hard to draw aren't you aren't you you little devil This is cool. Her hair. 
lots of stuff. I kind of I like her outfit though. Look at this kid. What is he doing? Has he got his like this? I have no idea what's going on here. Does this kid float? Like what? Well, it's weird because this feels like he's falling, but I don't think he's supposed to be falling. And then like him standing with like at this angle with his feet on their heads is very weird. Obviously, you couldn't balance like that. I mean, maybe he could. I couldn't. <laughs> Who's this little hobbit? And... All right. Shazam. Alex kind of, like, did this shot. It must have been a, an homage to him. That's funny. Alex will do stuff like that. And it, it kind of really, it actually has a similar vibe. Like, uh, the type... Oh, here's that thing. So it's a bridge of stone. Okay. But there, there are trees that have chunky bark like that, too. This is nice. I like there's a face on the castle. Oh, this is cool. I love, I love sword and sorcery stuff. That's This is so cool. I like his little pistol. This kind of has like a little bit of a shaken vibe. The little gun's kind of kind of cool. She is sharply dressed. I like it. White suit with the black that looks good. Good, good, good. And this is nice too. Todd Todd uses this at times. If you look though, he does. They're not just flat views. Some of them are. So I'm doing that with a mouse. But but um, he does actually show sides. Like if you look at this building right here, there's a little bit of like a side plane here. But most of them are kind of flat. You want to be careful of that though, because it's like if you if you do a shot like this. Oops, sorry. If you do a shot like this, the um, there's ultimately some vanishing point. So at some point you're gonna start to see like sides of some of the buildings. So not it. I mean, you can do it as a graphic design thing. Stephen Platt does it. He'll do even flat perspective like this, where like he'll draw like a double page spread and have buildings in the background. And there's no, there's no um, like stuff going down or up. So everything is literally like at eye level, which which again is kind of more of a graphic um, graphic idea. Other than um, it, it, it's graphic, not accurate. But accuracy isn't necessary in comics. It's, you know, we've seen that time and again. But it can work against you when you're learning. I guess my point is, is when you're learning and you do stuff like that, if you don't really know how to manage it, it can look flat. So the thing is, is like when a professional does it, they sort of understand that there's a breaking point and the silhouette still needs to be interesting. Um, and someone who maybe is learning um, just sees flat buildings and thinks that that's the way to do it, and then it doesn't work for them as well. So there's there's a massaging element that a more knowledgeable professional can put into it to make make sure that it does work. Man, this is a great figure. Oh, I love big dudes like this. This is probably my favorite drawing. Uh, 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 like this body in particular is just man, the weight on that is so good. Damn. That is great. His arms could almost be bigger, like based like you could, you could pump this up just a little bit more. But man, this is gonna be a fight. So you know, based on that last piece, it does look like he might actually be drawing all those stars in. That'd be a pain in the ass. Some more nice buildings. These are. It, the nice thing that he did here is they're they're pretty varied in terms of aesthetic. Like each building's got like a little tiny bit of a different personality. That helps too. You can get like ten different silhouettes of buildings. Um, this almost looks right out of like Batman Adventures. Satana. See, hey, see, hey, and, 
or N N A, Zatanna, like Anna. All right, I'm gonna start to wrap this up. It was I should get going. But uh, yeah, I would highly recommend this book. I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, you get a lot of bang for your buck out of it, and it's it's a fun read, and it's visually um, cool too. Superman. That's a nice shot of Metropolis. Nice and clean. Pretty colors. Classic key colors that Superman should have on his costume. Although, I mean, obviously, you know, in the last, like, 20, 25 years, it, it's become more dramatic. But um, for a long time, I had heard that DC does, does really try to... Um, keep the colors accurate to this i but again i mean if a scene's like purple lighting i mean i guess obviously then that kind of has to fall to the wayside a little bit and the colors are so advanced now too but i think though you know if if, if i if i think of jim lee's superman run that he did with azarello a lot of times superman's costume is the the real bright blue and in um red you know Cornfield. Cornfield. This is nice. I'll, I'll see how many more we have. If it's just a couple, then I'll go to the end. If not, I'm gonna I'm gonna bail out. Eh, it's a lot to go through. Alright, it's been a while. Let's just do it. This is the commitment that I have to this, this little scooter. This looks fun. I, I would I would like to draw a character that has the universe like kind of as his body. I wonder it would be hard to tell in black and white. It's it's pretty clear. I was wondering if this arm would look like it was coming forward in grayscale. The light on the top of the hand definitely helps because he's got like a light source sort of emitting from here. And so it's hitting that and kind of like that. So if if this would have been darker, it might have been problematic, but he was able to keep it pretty clear, all things considered. I wasn't sure how it would be. Oh yeah, this is that. Kind of fun seeing the pieces in, um, you know, pencil and ink, and then seeing them in the book. This kid's cool. He looks like the Toadie from a Christmas Story, the the little one that played. He was the the actor was Michael Anthony in the Van Halen Hoffer teacher video, the from from Christmas Story, the two bad kids, the one that has like the raccoon hat, and then the his little short buddy, that kid's the Michael Anthony character in the Hoffer teacher video because there there's a kid version of Van Halen in it. I was so excited when I found that out. I didn't know that until a few years ago. It's like what. He's him? No way. No way. And then someone said, way. Way, Rich. Way. All right. Really hard to read it, but it's still very cool. Uncle Sam wants you to do good things. <laughs> Sergeant Rock wants you to enlist. S support your country. Is this enemy ace? Blackhawk. That's right. So Blackhawk, I, I mean, I don't know who created the character, but I'm pretty sure Chaken did some Blackhawk stuff. So some of my I Chaken references throughout this uh, weren't many, but... but uh, Maybe I was remembering stuff that Chaken had done. I almost did the Art of Chaken today, believe it or not. That was the other serious contender for this video. This is cool. You want to hear something crazy? So my grandfather was a Marine, and he was fighting in um, China before World War II. So he enlisted in... 1936 so this is what five years before that so he was fighting over in china for a couple of years and he got married on december 6th 1936 
1941 and was here in San Diego and immediately had to ship out. Isn't that crazy? Like, they literally got married, and then the next day, uh, it was like the big war was on when the Japanese attacked us. Pretty, pretty crazy. But true. And that was my grandpa that I lived with. Good guy. Was a Marine for 30 years. He fought in three wars. Korea, World War II, and the, um, I don't know what they call it. Uh, like, he was, they referred to them as China Marines in the, the war before World War II. He wanted to fight in Vietnam, too. Guy's crazy. <laughs> Couldn't get enough. <laughs> They're like, you've done enough, sir. Please. <laughs> okay. We're out of here. Enough is enough. Very, very cool book. Chocked full of goodness. Oh, I like this. This reminds me of, like, Sergio Aragonis. <laughs> for some reason. All right, I'm ready for a nap now, man. I have no, I have no lasting energy. You know, Finch and I did a cover for, I think it was, God, what was the comic? It might've been Justice League. And it had a monkey with a spoon, a gorilla with a spoon. I still, to this day, I, I think it was Grodd. Oh, look, there's those, those like hanging spiders again. Um, but yeah, I didn't understand the big giant spoon. I saw it recently online, or someone had the original. I don't remember what it was, but in the last few weeks I saw it. I think that's why it was on my, my mind. It was, oh, it was a Instagram that's like one of those comic, you know, where they just show comic art every day. But I remember getting the piece from Finch and seeing like, the original... I'm like, the gorilla looks cool, but I'm like, why is he holding, like, a big spoon? It's going to make some biscuits. <laughs> Soup's on. He's like, that's not funny, Rich. Stop it. Stop what you're doing. That's pretty cool, actually. Let's look at his eyes. There was a lot more freaking pages left than I thought. This thing is, like, never-ending. All right. Okay, so look. I'll be back tomorrow night for Three Jerks, which is our independent comic show. Um, and uh, we have a pretty cool topic. I, I, I can't really remember what it is exactly. I think what we're doing is we're doing the Image Founders, but the work that they were doing before they started Image Comics, but maybe even pre-Marvel, something like that. If James if James sees this video and watches it to the end, explain to him this what we're doing, James. I'm, st I'm still recovering, man. I can't remember things. No, I'm just kidding. But all right, so look, I'll see you then. And then Sunday, Kelsey and I, I believe we're gonna do Super Fun Sunday, and that should be fun. Uh, so this weekend is going to be chock full of goodness. Sorry. Right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.